Uh, so you wrote uh, a series of good tweets about consciousness and panpsychism. So let's break it down. First you say, I suspect the experience that leads to the panpsychism syndrome of some philosophers and other consciousness enthusiasts represents the realization that we don't end at the self, but share a resonant universe representation with every other observer coupled to the same universe. This actually eventually leads us to a lot of interesting questions about AI and AGI, but let's start with this representation. What is this resonant universe representation? Um, and what do you think? Do we share such a representation? The neuroscientist uh, Grossberg has come up with a cognitive architecture that he calls the adaptive resonance theory. And his perspective is that our neurons can be understood as oscillators that are resonating with each other and with outside phenomena. So the coarse-grained model of the universe that we are building, in some sense, is a resonance with objects and outside of us in the world. So basically, we take up patterns that uh, of the universe that we are coupled with, and our brain is not so much understood as circuitry, even though this perspective is valid, but it's um, almost an ether in which the individual neurons are passing on mm -hmm. uh, electrical signals or arbitrary uh, signals across all modalities that can be transmitted between cells, stimulate each other in this way, and produce patterns that they modulate while passing them on. Mm -hmm. And this speed of signal progression in the brain is roughly at the speed of sound, incidentally, because the uh, time that it takes for the signals to hop from cell to cell, which means it's relatively slow with respect to the world. It takes an appreciable fraction of a second for a signal to go through the entire neocortex, something like a few hundred milliseconds. And so there's a lot of stuff happening in that time where the signal is passing through your brain, including in the brain itself. So nothing in the brain is assuming that stuff happens simultaneously. Everything in the brain is working in a paradigm where the world has already moved on when you are very, uh, ready to do the next thing to your signal, including the signal processing system itself. It's quite a different paradigm than the one in our digital computers, where we currently assume that um, your uh, GPU or CPU is pretty much globally in the same state. So you mentioned there the non-dual state and say that some people confuse it for enlightenment. Yeah. What's the non-dual state? There is a state in which you uh, notice that you are no longer a person, and uh, instead you are one with the universe. So that's, and that speaks to the resonance. Yes, and, but this one with the universe is, of course, not accurately modeling that you are indeed um, some god entity or indeed the universe is becoming aware of itself, even though you get this experience. I believe that you get this experience because your uh, mind is modeling the fact that you are no longer identified with the personal self in that state, but you have transcended this division between the self model and the world model, mm -hmm. and you're experiencing yourself as your mind, as something that is representing a universe. But that's still part of the model. Yes, so it's inside of the model, still you're in, yeah. still inside of patterns that are generated in your brain and in your organism. And uh, what you are now experiencing is that you're no longer this personal self in there, but you are the entirety of the mind and the, its contents. Why is it so hard to get there? A lot of people who get into the state think this or associated with enlightenment. I suspect it's a favorite training goal for a number of meditators. But um, uh, I think that enlightenment is in some sense more mundane and it's a step further or sideways. It's the state where you realize that everything is a representation. Yeah, you say enlightenment is a realization of how experience is implemented. Yes. So basically, you notice at some point that your qualia can be deconstructed. Reverse engineered? What, like a, almost like a schematic of it? What, what? Uh... You can start with uh, looking at a face. Maybe look at your own face in the mirror. Yeah. Look at uh, your face for a few hours in the mirror or for a few minutes. At some point, it will look very weird. And you, mm -hmm. because you notice that there's actually no face. You basically start unseeing the face. What you see is a geometry. And then you can disassemble the geometry and realize how that geometry is being constructed in your mind. And you can learn to modify this. So basically you can uh, change these generators in your own mind uh, to shift the face around or to uh, change the construction of the face, to uh, change the way in which the features are being assembled. Why don't we do that more often? Why don't we start really messing with reality without the use of drugs 
or anything else. Why don't we get good at this kind of thing? Like, uh, um, intentionally. Uh, why should we? Why would because you, you can morph reality into something more pleasant for yourself. Just have fun with it. Yeah, that is probably what you shouldn't be doing, right? Because outside of your personal self, this yeah. outer mind, is probably a relatively smart agent. And what you often notice is that you have thoughts about how you should live, yeah. but you observe yourself doing different things and having different feelings. And that's because your outer mind doesn't believe you and doesn't believe your rational thoughts. Well, the, can't you just silence the outer mind? The thing is that the outer mind is usually smarter than you are. Rational thinking is very brittle. Mm. It's very hard to use logic and symbolic thinking to have an accurate model of the world. So there is often an underlying system that is looking at your rational thoughts and then tells you, no, you're still missing something. Your gut feeling is still saying something else. And this can be, for instance, you find a partner that looks perfect or you find a deal and you uh, build a company or whatever that looks perfect to you. And yet at some level you feel something is off and you cannot put your finger on it. And the more you reason about it, the better it looks to you. But the system that is uh, outside still tells you, no, no, you're missing something. And that system is powerful. People call this intuition, right? Intuition is this unreflected part of your uh, attitude composition and computation where you produce a, a model of how you relate to the world and what you need to do it in it and what you can do in it and what's going to happen that is usually deeper and um, often more accurate than your reason. 